Hello, welcome back or welcome if you've never been here to Crystal Uncorked. I am so thrilled that you are here in this episode. I am talking about three things that just haven't quite worked out for me yet. And I'm sharing them for two reasons, to address never giving up and talk about accountability. And so uh, I have a question for you at the end of this episode. I really want this to create some conversation over on my Instagram page. So definitely tune in, please leave your feedback and let's dive in. Hello, I'm Crystal Vilkaitis. I'm a curious wine loving entrepreneur who loves to learn and have open and honest conversations. Join me and my amazing guests as we talk about all sorts of relatable business and life stuff. It's my goal that you'll have fun, learn something new, and get inspired. Wine is not required, but is recommended. This is Crystal Uncorked. All right, now the wine I am drinking, this is a special one, and you'll notice if you're watching the video that it has not been opened yet. And, uh, there's a reason for that. We're going to do some editing here. So this is Austin Hope Reserve. Uh, I drank Austin Hope Cab on the very first episode. Austin Hope is just one of my favorite wineries and wines. And I was able to go to the winery the launch weekend, the weekend that I launched Crystal Uncorked. And I joined their membership site and one of the bottle or their membership site, you could tell I have a membership website, um, their membership, their wine club membership. And um, one of the bottles I picked up is this 2018 Reserve. Holy guacamole. It is so freaking good. So the reason it's currently closed, I haven't uncorked it yet, is I'm bringing it right after I film this over to share with my dear friend, Robin Rodig, who I have been friends with for over 11 years, I think now. We met in 2010 and um, we share a love for wine. She is my friend that we do the wine name game where we count one, two, three and say the, the name or the flavors that we're getting from the wine. So I'm going to take this over there. We're going to do this together. And one of those reasons we're going to do this together is I have to share this bottle with her because she on my launch weekend called Austin Hope Winery and put a credit card down and said a bottle was on her. So I bought the most expensive one I could find. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I didn't. And I would never do too much. Um, but I, I didn't buy this one. I got one of our favorites, but I did get this one while I was there. We're going to try it. I know we're going to love it. So I'll clip that in. Hello. So like I said, I'm with my dear friend, Robin Rodig, and we have this delicious bottle of Austin Hope Reserve. So we're going to play our name game. Cheers, mm -hmm. my friend. Cheers. Here we go. All right. Oh my God. That's so smooth. Oh, did you give your name, your word away already? <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. You can't use spoon. <laughs> Man. One more. One more. One Man, more. that's good. Oh. Could you oh, imagine no. if we just showered that? <laughs> this is our first glass bottle. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that's so good. All right. Okay. okay. I got one. Man, I have a go I have one of my go-tos. I know, I know, I know. Is it gonna be cherry? No. <laughs> but it could be. Okay. Mine is close to that. Okay. Okay. Okay, ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Blueberries. Oh, that is a go-to. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, blueberries. Motor oil. Mm-hmm. I want to say smooth though. Very. It is so smooth. Delicious. And I don't remember. There's something about motor oil like that yes. is a real thing. It is. Based on the ground, right? And yeah. depending on where the grapes are grown. Yeah. Now I don't know. I don't think that this has that. <laughs> But that's what I great job, taste. Crystal. I know, yeah, really, really crushed that one. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that's our name game. You saw it in action. Yes. And uh, we are wishing you a wonderful day. Now let's head back into the episode. Cheers. Cheers. We are talking about three things that just haven't worked out for me yet. And like I said in the intro, I really am sharing this because these three things are things that I've wanted to achieve over many years. One of these starts dates back to when I was like 11 or 12. And I let the answer no or obstacles get in my way. And 
I haven't, I've been like, oh, nope, okay. And kind of like ran away or kind of have stopped. And in a way that's failing, you know, like I just kind of gave up. And so what I want to do is talk about those three things. And it, they're also kind of funny because the way I was told no is just sort of funny. So I thought it would make for a good episode. And what I want to do is at the end of this episode, I want you to share with me if there was a situation or a story that you have where you thought for sure you're going to do something, you're going to achieve something, you're going to get something. And man, oh man, you were wrong. You didn't. Uh, and you haven't gotten it yet, but maybe it's something that you do want to get. Share it with me over on Instagram, Crystal Uncorked. Follow, share, you'll see the post where I'm asking about this. Um, but here's the deal. These three things, like I thought for sure I was going to get. Okay. So we're going to start back to the past. When I was an 11, cute little 11 year old, really short hair, braces, and I was in Barbizon, which is a modeling association when I was so young. And then I went into what's called IMTA. It stands for International Modeling and Talent Association. Now, I grew up in Colorado, so my chapter was in Denver. So for many months, my parents would drive me down to Denver for the weekend. Sometimes we would stay down there. Sometimes we'd drive back and forth about an hour each way. And I would go to modeling and, and acting school. And I will say that I definitely think that that training helped me when I was, yeah, or helped me today, right? Like I love being on stages. I'm comfortable with it. I'm comfortable on camera. And I think part of that is because I did have training when I was a kid. So, um, also I, I didn't even talk about my cool shirt. If you are listening to this, you can't see my cool shirt, but if you're watching this, like if you're listening, you need to go check out this video because, uh, in this found me on Instagram, Instagram ads, they do work. It's why I teach it. It's why we run ads for retailers. How cool is this shirt? I had to get it. I freaking love it. Um, anyways, so I would go down to Denver and I'd learn all these things. And then what we did with IMTA is we would go to New York City. This is how it kind of works. Like you train for several months, then you go to New York City to the big competition where all the IMTA regions or chapters meet up all over the world and compete. And I was in a lot of different competitions. I did runway, sitcoms, monologues, commercials, and um, I think that's it. I loved runway. I loved runway. I love runway. I wish I could do runway to this day. I was too short, unfortunately. I'm 5'5". Five five. Uh, runways eased up a little bit on their uh, body shapes and sizes, thankfully. But um, if they'll ever have a 35 year old, you know, short girl, <laughs> I'd love to, I would love to walk. Um, but I, I didn't, you know, I did runway. I did these sitcoms and commercials. I also did a monologue. And this is where I just think like side note, this is kind of a funny story. The script that my teachers gave me, like they assigned stuff to us. They really missed the mark with me. I kind of feel like I was set up for failure on this one because my whole story in this monologue was I was a woman living alone in an apartment in New York City and I had a cat. I was 11 or 12 years old when I think I was 12 and I went to the competition. I could not relate to my script at all. Like, I remember reading this being like, I don't even know what this means. I couldn't feel it. So anyways, that was sort of a mess up on their part, I feel like. But but uh, I learned a lot through doing that. And I will tell you that that conference was terrifying for me. I was a shy kid. So when we did all these competitions, like you're waiting in line and then you listen to everybody's commercial sitcom, whatever. And when you had like really good people, you know, you're like, dang, they're good. I, I just, I know I'm not that good. And, um, and then we had to do these, what's called go sees. So you bring your portfolio. I had, you know, my headshots, I'll, I'll try to post some of the, um, pictures on Instagram and on my blog of my headshots that I had. I have some really fun, cute ones in there, but, um, I had my portfolio and like what I'm good at kind of like a resume for, for models or actors, if you will. And, um, I, you go into this massive ballroom and I think there was, I want to say there was four. 4,000 tables 
I could be over exaggerating because I was a kid and it felt like that, but there was, a, it was packed. It was a massive ballroom packed. And it was just all these tables with like two people sitting at them representing all the networks, movie stations, um, acting agencies, model agencies, all sorts of things, right? The only two that I sat down with, what you had to do is you had to find, you know, where you want to go and stand in line. And everybody had like one to three minutes and you go up and you, they'd look through your portfolio and ask you some questions and then you'd be on your way. I don't even know if it was a, a full two minutes. It was really fast. So I was terrified and my parents couldn't go with me in it. So I had to like stand in line by myself and find the right places. And I felt really, really scared to be honest and uncomfortable, but I did it. And I, I was in the Nickelodeon and Disney were the only two that I talked to. Um, the, I kept switching lines and ran out of time and I just did kind of a terrible job of like networking and trying to get as many tables as possible. I just felt really out of my element. So what ends up happening is you do the competitions, then you have your go-sees, and then we met in this room, my chapter. Um, there's about 55 of us in my chapter for Denver. You meet in a room and they say if you get a callback. So they announce it out loud. They read everybody's name who gets a callback and you got like a piece of paper or something with who you're going to go back and see. Uh, and there were about six of us, like six or seven who did not get a call back. And so what ended up happening was they said everybody that gets callbacks and they're all excited. And everybody's like in the room and you're waiting, you're anticipating, you're hoping, you're hoping, you're hoping your name is called. And my name was not called. I was one of those seven people. And it was like immediate failure. You, I just felt like, whoa, I suck. I, I'm not pretty enough. I'm not good enough. Like I was young. So of course my head went right there. You know, I was so immature and I know my parents put so much investment into this, like monetarily as well as their time driving me and flying there. And, and they kind of were really hoping they saw so much potential in me, which is so sweet, but it just wasn't there. And uh, not for that, I guess, or that time. So um, it was really sad. And what ends up happening is like the seven of us, everybody's like, yay, celebrates. And then they leave the ballroom. And then it's like, for everybody who didn't get their name called, you can hang out in this room and walk around and look at each of the stations. It's like little stations of like, what to do next? Like second tier schools, more schooling, you know, whatever. And so we did our loop, but I was just like, can we go home? Can we just go play in New York City? Like, I just felt so mortified. Um, by the way, in my class of like in that year of IMTA was when was Ashton Kutcher. That's when he got picked up. I don't know if that was like when he got famous, but uh, he I don't think he was famous before. In my, he's in my yearbook and his name is Chris Ashton Kutcher. Um, and same with Fergie's husband, Josh Dumel. So I'm like, uh, they totally... <laughs> made it pretty big and um it's pretty cool so anyways that didn't work out for me but i'm sharing this because i kind of think it's funny like i can laugh at it now that i was one of the seven that didn't get picked and um just thinking of how awkward some of those situations were i did win an award on the runway so that's cool you know um but that was about it I, you know you pay all this money and travel and learn and spend all this time and all you get is a stupid award. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like that, but whatever. But I share this because this is all about not giving up and accountability. So um, I forgot to mention that Patricia on her episode, the previous one to this episode, she talked about how we are seven times more likely to achieve a goal when we have peer support, when we have accountability. And so um, for me, you know, not giving up and having that accountability, what I really wanted to have come out of that is I've always wanted my own talk show. I've always seen myself on stages and being a speaker. And of course, like runway would be super cool, but it's not necessarily like what I see my 
my career being like, you know, what I do in life. And so after that IMTA, like I, I stopped, I cut out doing everything. I didn't want to do anything, never really revisited any of it, never have gotten formal speaking training. Thankfully, I just kind of picked that up and have been good at it. Um, so, you know, maybe that can still work out for me. Uh, I don't know in the future what it, what it holds, but I would love to have something like that. And actually what's kind of neat is this show in itself in a way is like a talk show when I have my guests on. So maybe I kind of have already achieved it, but, um, that was, that was funny, wild experience. The, the next one for me. So that's the first one. Number two in 2019, I was um, doing some life coaching online. Like I'm a constant learner and I'm always listening and learning. And, um, the speaker was talking about how, if you want to achieve something, you need to schedule something or think big or put something on the calendar and then kind of like work backwards. And so she was talking about health. If you want to get in shape, then you should sign up to run a 5k, you know, just get the date on the calendar. People have told me that when I want to do a big, I want to do a big event in person event. And everybody has always said, pick the date and the location, get on the calendar. Boom. That's what you got to do. Like that's the first step. So, uh, uh, for me, I would like to get stronger. Like losing weight isn't that big of a motivator for me. It's really just having a stronger, more flexible body because as I get older, I'm only 35, but I have a lot of aches and pains and I'm not as strong as I want to be. And, um, I know that as I get older, it's only going to get harder. So I really try to move my body every single day for at least 30 minutes and start doing more. But after I heard that this was, uh, this was in August of 2019, I was, I immediately remembered when Dustin and I one year were in, um, at Disney world in January and it was the marathon. People were running a marathon through the Disney park. And I'm like, if I'm going to run anything, it totally should be Disney. Like they were dressed up in the park. I thought it was so cool because if you don't know this about me, I love Disney. You know, we're in Southern California. We try to go to Disneyland as much as we can when we could. Um, it's just like, it's magical. So it's therapy. So I, I went to the site to see when is, you know, do they do those every January? Sure enough, they did. And on the Disney website, they gave you a calendar of a training calendar. And they said like, when you're starting and based off of your experience, like if you're a beginner, intermediate, advanced, and when you should be running and what lengths and how to kind of like progress week by week. Well, this calendar that I found, so this is a Monday when I'm on the site, Monday night, started on a Tuesday, the exact amount of weeks that I was out. So August, September, October, November, December, I think it was like a four week situation here, four or five, um, or I'm sorry, four or five month situation. So I'm looking at this training calendar for beginners for a half marathon at Disney World that starts, would start tomorrow. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it. So, uh, Tuesday morning comes, I get up early, put my shoes on and I have a Peloton. So they have the app and I did a running thing for 30 minutes. I only ran for about 10 of the 30 minutes, but started kind of like conditioning and I'm following my Disney thing that I'm supposed to do. And that felt great. And I felt strong. I was super tight the next day. The next day you're supposed to run is Thursday do it all over again, suit up, go out, do it, do it. I stretch, come back, whatever. I'm awesome. Definitely feeling it, but I can do this. Saturday, I sit on the fucking floor and pull my groin. It was fire. Oh my God, it hurts so bad. And it ended up moving to my hip and I had really bad pain for several months. I eventually went to the doctor and had to go through physical therapy, which um, I only went a couple of times and I've been really bad at doing my physical therapy. I will be so honest. I've been so bad at it. I learned a lot. Um, I still have pain and I'm filming this in April of 2021. So I have been really scared to run again. What I really need to do is do my physical therapy and stretch more and ease back into it. And thankfully, like, um, 
I was thinking with COVID, I wouldn't have been able to rant, run, but I would have been able to if I didn't get injured and if I stayed on the track. So, so maybe January of 2022, um, I want to say either 2022 or 2023, I would like to run the Disney half marathon. So I am saying this, you know, okay, I want my talk show and then I want to run this, this half marathon. And if you follow me on Instagram, of course, I will keep updates and on the show, I'll keep updates too. Um, maybe we could do it together. Like, do you want to do that? Do you have any interest in running the marathon? Um, that might be really fun. So, so I thought it was hilarious though, that it's like, I, I seriously was so excited Asked Dustin. I was like, it's so meant to be. It's perfect timing. Oh my gosh. I was so excited. And then boom, pull your groin. You're out. Got to go to physical therapy. Like so ridiculous. So, okay. I'm going to work hard, get stronger and do that. Do that half marathon, Disney half marathon. The, um, the last one is funny. I was listening to a podcast because I'm a constant life learner. And um, the speaker was saying how she was traveling so much and for speaking, like flying so much and writing her book on the plane and blah, 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 that she just started asking for first class. Like I, I'll go, but this is my fee and I will only fly first class. And it was a non-negotiable for her. And she was really worried to ask to fly first class, but she put it out there because she knew that that would help make her traveling experience easier because she's doing it so much. And sure enough, people said yes. And she's like, so you just have to ask, what do you want? Ask for it. So I'm like, oh my God, I want the exact same thing. I travel a lot too. I would love to fly first class. And guess what? I, I don't know how many miles I've flown. I've flown a lot of places for many years. Uh, I've never flown first class in my entire life. I have never flown first class. And some of you might be thinking, why don't you just book yourself a fucking first class ticket and just go? Like, why do you have to have somebody else do it? But I don't know. I guess it is expensive and I rather use that money on my trip than like getting there. And I just rather have that be like my level of speaking that I'm on the road a lot. So I do want first class. This is just what I, you know, I require this. I want to travel in luxury. That's the kind of life I would like to live. So, uh, that's what I asked for. And within like 12 hours, cause somebody reached out to me to speak for their conference and I've spoken there before within 12 hours, they're like, everything looks great, except we can't fly you first class. We could do coach. Does that work? <laughs> I'm just like, man, my first time trying, I was really nervous sending it that I got a no, like a fast. No, I still went and spoke and, um, just still waiting for that first class. But but I really, I just stopped asking for it after that. I was like, oh, nobody's going to pay. Nobody sees the value. I'm just going to stop asking. Uh, and I don't like that. Like that is something I really want. If I'm going to be on the road a lot, I would like to be in first class. One thing I did do is I switched my loyalty. I was on Southwest. They don't have first class. So I switched my loyalty to Delta. So maybe I could get some upgrades and I have started getting some comfort plus upgrades. Uh, I'm just waiting for that first class. So just you wait, it's going to be a big celebration once I am finally flying first class. However it happens, I can't wait. Um, I haven't flown for over a year because of COVID. So it sounds really, it feels really weird talking about this, but that is something I really want to achieve. And if I'm a paid speaker flying first class, that's a bigger achievement for me than of course me purchasing it. So kind of funny, like I have all these hopes. Yes, this is going to happen. And then boom, no, no, no. And, uh, I want to hear from you. Like I said earlier, what is it that do you have something? Do you have something that you were like, yes, I'm going to do this. It's going to be amazing. You got to know. And then you stop trying. Do you want to try again, you know, or, or are you like, but I'm really glad that I got that no, because that just would not work out for me. Something else happened, right? Like I do believe that everything does happen for a reason. There are no coincidences. I believe in timing, but I do think that it's important for us to get clear on what we do want and start taking those steps to get there and just know that you might get knocked down or it might take a little bit longer, but you can still get there if you want to get there, you know? 
you could do it, put your back into it. I just have that song in my head for some reason. So if you want to share your your story with me, I would love it. Go on over to Instagram, uh, leave a comment. You can DM me or you can leave a comment on the Crystal Uncorked blog. It's just Crystal Uncorked dot com. And in the next episode, I have my very first retailer that I am interviewing, Tammy Staker with Whimsy. She has a toy store in Albert Lee, Minnesota. We have a really great conversation about all things retail. So if, especially if you are a retailer, you're going to freaking love Tammy and love what she says. There's some really good inspirational things in there. I actually got chills editing part of that episode. So, um, I hope you tune in and uh, I'll see you on the next See You. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening. Are you on Instagram? I'd love to see pictures of you listening to the show, a screenshot of your favorite episode and or your favorite wines. Share them with me. Just follow and tag at Crystal Uncorked. I can't wait to see you there. All right. I'll see you on the next See You.